So excited to have these two guests coming on to the show. Uh, we are talking to none other than Yasha Levine, who is a Russian-American journalist, uh, and also uh, Mark Ames, a journalist who spent 13 years on and off in Russia, and also is the host of the co-host of the uh, Radio War Nerd podcast, which is a great podcast. Uh, and Yasha is also the co-host of the Russians podcast, another great podcast. So Yasha and Mark, welcome. Hey, how are you Hi. doing, Katie? Hey, Thanks for joining. Here. We wanted to have you on to talk about what is happening right now in Russia. Um, there is obviously this um, Prigozhin, uh, Yevgeny Prigozhin tried <clears throat> to do a little mini mutiny. Then that failed. That was on Friday. Can you, there's so Not much so happening. Many. But not so many. Okay. <laughs> no, so not so will... many. Yeah. I mean, you know, 15,000 or 20, God knows how many. Right. Not mini mutiny, a mini yeah. coup, major mutiny yeah. or mini coup. Right. Thank you yeah. for correcting me. I'd say it was a, you know, ride for justice is what I'd call it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you called it right. Yeah. <laughs> march so... for justice, the million mercenary march for yes. justice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Million mercenary march. <laughs> so can you tell us what happened since Friday? Uh, you mean since the, since the mutiny slash coup fell apart yeah. or, yes. um, Prigozhin, uh, his, for, his forces, they, they made sort of two thrusts, one on Rostov Nadanu, uh, in the South, which is where the, um, a lot of the military command is for the main, um, you know, for the, for the war in Ukraine. Um, and I, I think they were already heading that way or they're very close by anyway. Um, so it was easier to take that. And then another detachment, I think, you know, again, you don't know, we don't know a lot, but let's say it could have been a, a few hundred, you know, vehicles worth of faster vehicles. Um, were heading up towards Moscow and they were getting up there fast. I mean, you would see, oh, they, they went through checkpoints and, you know, uh, Varanej and uh, then through Lipetsk and like they, they were, they got, I think within 200 kilometers of Moscow. Um, and it was, it was sort of like this high stakes, um, negotiation. It was a way of negotiating, getting Putin's, uh, attention, um, because Prigozhin had been releasing increasingly wild, um, rage filled, kind of increasingly crossing red lines videos on his telegram channel. And, you know, I, I think um, what that said was, I mean, everyone would say he's very close to Vladimir Putin. Well, if he was very close to him, he wouldn't be doing these videos for the public. I mean, he, clearly Putin hadn't been picking up his calls for quite a while. And um, and then apparently, according to the story, as as his troops were getting closer, uh, Putin tried calling him and couldn't get through. Uh, he basically said, I'm busy or something. And that really pissed off Putin. Then he panicked and tried calling Putin and couldn't get through to Putin. I, you know, I don't know if this is true, but I like this story, if, if it's not. And, uh, and then um, Alexander Lukashenko, the leader of Belarus, came in as the, uh, I, I think it's the first time Lukashenko has been able to do something where he looked like something more than just a Putin's cock, like his puppet or something, you know, where he was able to take a, um, you know, a manly role in all this and, um, uh, and, and to kind of assert himself a little bit. So he got on the horn with uh, uh, Prigozhin and Putin and um, helped diffuse the situation. And apparently, again, we don't know the terms of the deal. Like what we do know is it did diffuse it, whatever whatever the deal was. And we do know that Prigozhin is in, in Minsk and there are some Wagner um, uh, mercenaries or fighters, whatever you want to call them, that are in Belarus as well, but we don't know how many. I mean, is it they're, like, what are you, you going to say? I, no, I don't know. They're in a specialized camp. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I know. Yeah, like, uh, uh, I mean, I would like imagine, uh, imagine right here, that Albert's like, hey, yeah, there, we, we got a little camp for you right here. Yeah. Uh, just, yeah, just, just, to, yeah, go, go to sleep. You know, don't worry. Yeah, yeah I know you must be tired from that march, <laughs> you know? I would not yeah, go me, to that camp. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, you um, know, I, I, I want to comment on something. I mean, just, you know, I mean, because I, no one. OK, well, no one really knows what is actually going on or what, what like what is behind Prigozhin's march. I mean, we can only sort of make guesses. But I mean, I don't know what you think about this, Mark. But, you know, one thing that that 
was surprising to me, you know, going and kind of listening to the 30 minute speech that he made, you know, that he released on Telegram video speech, recorded speech, you know, basically a day before he did the before he went on Rostov. He kind of kind of made this ultimatum or something or get, get, said his grievance speech, kind of like what Putin did with the war right in Ukraine. Right. He did his grievance speech, yeah. waited a day and then just, oh, OK, no one's saying anything. Oh, no, yeah. no one's coming to me. OK, all right. I'm serious now. And then he, and he went on our stove. But if his intention was to get his bosses or get Putin's attention and kind of get in Putin's good graces and say, hey, Putin, like uh, I'm, you're not you're not picking up the phone and you got all these assholes who are you know above me who are, you know, who are you know, basically wrong, who are corrupt, who are, you know, who, who are doing everything wrong and they're messing everything up for you. He didn't praise Putin. I don't remember. No. I don't, he didn't praise Putin at all. No, he, he, he kind of, no. Um, it's, it was a very strange thing. Yeah, It was. I mean, he was, he was doing the sort of the czar's ministers are bad, but the czar is good thing up until that moment. And then, say, yeah, but he earlier he was. Yeah. Er, er, earlier he wasn't he was. necessarily saying Putin is good, but he was making, a, he was saying that Putin is being misled. Right. You know, no. which is that yeah. that sort of thing, right? And yes, but, yeah. he, but he did he did get more directly in Putin's face at the very end there. Yeah. Um, we actually you know, have a video I wanted you to to react to a short video from Reuters. Head of Russia's Wagner Group mercenary organization is for the first time publicly rejecting Moscow's official justification for the war in Ukraine, saying the reason for the invasion was based on lies running directly counter to President Putin's own statements and marking a new milestone in the months-long feud between the Wagner founder, Evgeny Prigozhin, and Russia's top military brass. This is part of Prigozhin's video, which was posted on Telegram. Why was the war needed? The war was needed so that a handful of scumbags could have a blast and get PR attention showing how strong the army is. The war was needed not in order to return Russian citizens to our bosom and not in order to demilitarize and denazify Ukraine. It was needed for one star with additional embroidery so that one mentally sick man could look good on a coffin pillow. Shaigu lives by the principle that a lie must be horrific for people to believe it. That's when the lies come. Prigozhin's referring to Russia's defense minister, Sergei Shaigu, a constant target of his criticism. He's often so, accused Shaigu and oh. other military leaders of incompetence, but rejecting the core reasons for the war is new for Prigozhin. He says Shaigu's deceiving President Putin and that the war was also used to enrich the ruling elite. Prigozhin also specifically uses the word war in the video not the phrase special military operation used by the Kremlin. Prigozhin's enjoyed unusual freedom in publicly criticizing Moscow, although not Putin himself. Whom God, he where do Reuters hire, hire these support. people, man? I know. This is like the most wild, exciting, I, I mean, you know, people, horrible yeah. and everything, but this was the most exciting news event of for the last year, and that guy just put me to sleep. I mean, I, like, yeah. what the hell's wrong with him? I mean, yeah. Jesus well, Christ. I mean, I, 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 I find the translation. I don't. It's, that was. A I know he also clip. he also left out like it's... how really incendiary. It didn't yeah. sound nearly as incendiary as also, the original. Yeah. Right? It feels like it's a, well, that was a mashup of two different clips because the the middle translation seemed to come from somewhere else. Uh, anyway, right. but I mean, more, more or less, it, it's it, it's it's correct. I mean, that's what he said. That's the in fact the, the thirty minute speech that I'm referring to, in which, which he explicitly said that. I mean, one of the things that was interesting is that he said there Russia was not under threat, that there was no threat yeah. of Ukraine invading Russia. The, one of the justifications that, that that Russia gave for this invasion was that, you know, Ukraine was planning an imminent attack, an imminent invasion of, of Russia. And so this was done as a kind of preemptive preemptive attack to protect Russia. Preemptive war. Yeah, oh, yeah preemptive war. You know, we all know how well those go uh, mm -hmm. in America. Um and so, and so, he, yeah. So he he says that that was wrong. I mean, he he sort of what he does is he sort of says that it, one man basically launched this war. You know, uh, Shaigu, which is Sergei Shaigu, who is the minister of defense of Russia, of who, who's he's been you know feuding with for for openly for months now, and essentially, and he's, and he's yeah. thought to be a potential successor to Putin too. Yeah, which that's is an important yeah, that's, thing to note here. Yeah, yeah. So he's I mean yeah. he's Putin's boy. I mean pretty clearly, yeah. and so and so he's been warring with him directly, and so and so he's sort of laying it at his feet, saying. He's been lying to Putin. He's been lying to the Russian people. 
about the, the the nature of this war and the threat the, the the threat that you know Russia was under which you know was didn't exist essentially and so it was pretty interesting it was kind of like uh, you know he's kind of making a, I don't know, like an observation that I guess I w- I've made, you know, uh, in the beginning of this, w- after this war started, you know, that this didn't seem like to be, I mean, this was a war of choice. This wasn't a war of necessity, you know, in the sense that like it was, it, they chose to do this, not you know, not because they were defending themselves, you know, immediately, but because they thought, it, you know, they could, there were other, there are other plans for it. And so it, it was pretty interesting to, to see him say, because at least, you know, not everything, I don't think it was one man launched the war. I don't think Shaigu is the guy who's, you know, masterminding the war. I don't know what yeah. you think, but I think that's, no, because definitely again, that's, not. that's just part of his it's sort of it, feud, that's part of his feud yeah. but like but the that 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 other part about you know basically calling bullshit on 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 the reasons for the war you know on this little in his in his own little kind of limited way i think is actually pretty true you know uh strikes me as at least 75 percent true so it was surprising and yeah it was it was just useful for him at that moment to say truer yeah. things uh, he yes. also is kind of playing the anti like he's not being anti-war because he wanted to war no, harder exactly. like that was his he's not complaint, anti-war right? that's yeah. the silliest thing of all he's not anti-war he's he's against you know the lies the corruption it's very typical patriot patriotic you know complaints in all wars right i mean going back to all the vietnam complaints it's the politicians lied to us we could have right. won the war you know we shouldn't have been there but then we could have won it but right. the politicians very similar to that it's a very right wing argument and it's no different here and it is and a lot of, you know, right wing pro military nationalists in Russia have not been happy at all with the way the war has been conducted. They've all thought that Putin is too wishy washy. You know, it's very different from the way Putin has talked about it here. Um, yeah. Yeah. They think he's been too wishy washy almost the entire time. And um, so I think he captures that.